Hi everyone, long time no see and I've been receiving a lot of questions lately regarding UPU application and how to enter medical school as a whole and that's why I've decided to film this video right before I go back to my college, Gadiaman in UKM. Oh yeah, if you're new here, I'm, a, I'm Chi Wei and I'm a first year medical student from University Kebangsaan, Malaysia. So I'm actually rushing to go back but then I figured that I should really really film this video now because I heard that your UPU application will be closing next week. So I hope this video uh, would be helpful and I hope that it can be edited out in time. Lah. So I'm going to cover everything that you need to know from SPM until having your offer letter until getting your interview. So this video is going to be quite long I guess uh, because I'll be covering like everything that I wanted to know when I was like a clueless pre-medical student and I really hope that uh, it will be helpful and I also um, will be referring to this thing so I hope you guys don't mind. Okay so without further ado let's dive right into it. So let's start with SPM, Sijil Pembelajaran Malaysia. Yeah long time ago for me lah. So it is a very important exam as you all know and I would tell you that the minimum requirement to enter the medical course would be 5 Bs in Biology, Chemistry, Physics, Admats and Mathematics. So you all can go to the university's website and all to search for their entry requirements and like do your own research there lah. But generally it would be like a 5B. As for advice for SPM, all I can say is that the medical course is very 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 competitive. So definitely don't aim for 5Bs, although that is like the minimum requirement but you know it's so competitive that they will actually pick the best out of the best. So if you want, if you're someone who have not taken SPM, um, yeah, straight A's, okay, straight A's, yeah, uh, that would be the best lah. And probably, okay, if I were to give like a advice, like really from my, myself, from what I actually experienced, uh, this may not apply to everyone, but you know, for like, I wanted to enter matriculation because matriculation is actually a very, very good route to actually enter public universities uh, yeah, for non bumi putras lah. And uh, in matriculation, it's already like everyone knows that they have like a 10% quota system for non bumis which is Chinese, Indians and yeah. So uh, that 10% quota system makes it super competitive to enter. So um, all I can tell you is that if you want to have like a direction, I would really recommend you uh, suggest you, strongly suggest you to aim for, of course straight A's like that one, don't need to say, but uh, 5 A pluses and above, 5 A plus and above. Uh, reason? Because I applied for matriculation with 11 A's and 1 B plus. My B plus is Bahasa Jina. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, so uh, my, I got 11 A's, but the problem is my A plus is not a lot. Like, I got like less than 5 A plus. So, yeah, because it's so competitive, I didn't I didn't get selected in the first filter. So I the first time I didn't get the offer. So I was like, oh my god, I'm like, yeah, I feel a bit like, oh no, I didn't get the offer. Like, what am I gonna do now? Because um, studying in a public university for medicine is has a lot of uh, pros la, than cons. So I'll get into that later. So I but I appealed and then I appeal like again and then. At last, I got it. Like, really, luckily, fortunately, I got the matriculation offer in my second try. So, I got in, oh. mm. Then, from what I observed, like, I asked my Chinese friends around and I asked them, like, okay, la, like, um, how's their results and stuff, just to make, like, an analysis. And I realized that those who got in in, the, in their first try, they all get, like, 5A+, 6A+, 7A+, 8A+, they got, like, really really good result uh, like 5A plus and above so yeah that's why I'm telling you if you have not taken your SPM uh, and if you wanna cause even my brother he's like he's like taking SPM this year so he asked me ma like that um, if I wanna study this and this like how much should I aim for so if you're like having the same doubt then if you ask me I would say straight A's and 5A plus and above but it doesn't mean that you have to get 5A plus and above in order to en enter medicine. Nah. It's just to be safe, to secure the offer. 
okay um yeah i think that's all from me uh, uh for spm so really try to aim for very good results uh, and your road ahead would be much easier okay yeah okay now you have finished spm and now you're entering your pre-university journey and I'm sure those who have finished their SPM, you'll be like, you don't know what to study. Should I take A-levels? Should I take STPM? Should I take uh, ASASI? Should I take matriculation? Yeah, you, you're you going to be like, you don't know what to do. Okay, so it's okay. I got your back. I got your back. Okay, so uh, the most common courses are ASASI, um, which is the foundation program in uh, public universities, matriculation, STPM, A-levels, and foundation in science in uh, the private universities uh. so well I mean they all serve the a common purpose which is like before entering medical school you have to go through like your pre u studies and uh, what what drives them okay maybe I'll explain a bit like okay ASASI what is ASASI yeah ASASI is a foundation program under like uh, public universities like U UM's ASASI is called PASUM uh, UKM Asasi is called Asasi Pinta. UPM also has Asasi la, but then uh, just just to let you all know, of course it's all open for Bumi Putra, but uh, for uh, UM Asasi it is only open for Bumi Putra la. So if you're like non Bumi, you can apply to UKM and UPM. Oh? Okay, so what are the differences between all these? Basically, it Really, it just depends whether you want to study in private university or you want to study in public university. Okay, so I'll say first, like, if you want to study in public university, then you, you should go for ASASI, matriculation, or STPM. In a case where you want to study in uh, ASASI, then it will be when you already know which university you want to study in. So let's say, like, okay, I want to study in UKM. Then, yeah, you should apply for UKM ASASI because I believe they put their students in their priority uh, when they select la, for like medical school so uh, if you want to study in UPM then you should go to study uh, ASASI UPM oh. but if you want you want to study in UM per se or like you still don't know which university you want then you can go for matriculation matriculation um, is like a 10 month program la. so matriculation you have the freedom to choose which university you want to study in for your degree yeah and then lastly, STPM. Lo. STPM takes a longer duration of time, I think one and a half years. But STPM is like um, recognized by overseas. La. So yeah, these are like government funded uh, programs. And if you want to study in private universities, then you should go for foundation in science or A-levels. So, so A-levels is when you still don't know what you want to study, you don't know which university you want, and you take A-levels because it's like uh, eligible in a lot of places uh, and even overseas. And then foundation in science in, is let's say I really want to study in IMU or I, I know that I want to study in Utah for medicine, then you can apply for their foundation in science program. Oh. Then you would like, have like a direct link lah. And they would put you in their priority, just like how like Asasi, uh, UKM, they because they are already part of UKM. So, um, I don't know how true is this, but then they say that when they select their students for medical school, they would sort of prioritize the their foundation students, and then they look at uh, STPM, they look at uh, matriculation, and then they lastly they will look at uh, private universities, um, sort of program like A levels, etc. Okay, so I think the next question that you all would ask would be like, what? how difficult are these pre-university program? Uh, I, I guess like, I can't really speak for foundation in science for uh, private universities because I don't have information on that part. But I do have friends from ASASI, matriculation myself. La. Then I have friends from STPM and I have friends from A-levels. And what I can tell you, uh, please please take this in a, as a pinch of salt. La, but um, from what I know, Matriculation is easier than STPM and uh, A levels in terms of syllables. Uh, like they STPM and A levels, they go much in depth, and matriculation is not not so. But it doesn't mean that it is easier as a whole. The syllabus is easier, but because the program is ten months long, and A levels and STPM is like one and a half years, so yeah, it's uh easy and difficult on different aspects okay and then for asasi because there's so many asasi right like asasi pinta pasum uh, the U upm asasi 
I I do, I don't I can't really tell but I only know the Asasi Pinta program because I have friends who studying in Asasi Pinta and they told me that the difficulty is actually uh, on in par like, on par with STPM and A levels because they have yeah they have seen the they have compared like, and they told me that uh, Asasi Pinta is not easy yeah so I think that is all the information that I can give you. And fees definitely, if you study in government funded pre-university programs, you save a lot. Like for for matriculation, I just like I just need to pay the like the registration fee and other thing is like cover, funded by the government. And of course if you study in A levels and foundation in science in private universities, the fees would be much higher. Yeah. Do we the lighting? You see the sky dark already. Are you but it's okay, I have to finish filming this. Okay, okay, so now let's go to private medical schools versus public medic public universities medical schools because I know I was curious last time. I'm sure you guys are too, I guess. Because uh before applying before studying uh applying to medical schools, I actually went although I aim for matriculation but I need backup, right? So I also went to like a lot of pub private universities to ask and like sort of like compare their price uh, and all those things yeah so you say if you talk about quality i'm 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 sure that they are equally good private or public i think they are equally good the biggest the biggest difference like is the fees so. like just simple as that is the fees the tuition fees because the in private universities right the cheapest uh, is 300k like 300,000 ringgit and I think the the university that is the most affordable for medical for the medical course right would be Utah which is like the one that last time I applied to la, as a backup yeah because that one is like 267k or something but uh, IMU, Monash and all right they are all like 300k and above yeah and guess what for public universities try to guess the fees it's only around 10k for the whole five years the entire five years it's around 10k only like for ukm i think i paid 12k la. so the the difference is like huge yeah and when i actually told my friend who was studying in a levels he was like super shocked he's like what that's cheaper than my a levels fees like how is that possible? Yeah, it's, it's possible. Yeah, because I think a lot of, a lot of like, probably like a lot of Chinese, like, they don't really know about like, they, they all think like, oh, private school better, blah, blah, blah. They don't really know about the government's, the public university side. Lah. So, now you know. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, you should really, really consider studying in um, public universities, I would say, because the quality of education is top tier because they represent Malaysia, right? University of Malaya, University Kebangsaan Malaysia. The quality of education and myself being in uh, a first year medical student in UKM, I can assure you that the quality, the facilities, everything is, yeah, the quality is, is like, I would say top tier, like, it's good. And um, in, world, in the world's ranking as well, UKM and U. UM and UPM, they are also in the worst university ranking. Yeah, but... Yeah, and they have, like, the latest technology. And the most important thing is that they actually... For UKM and UM, and I think, yeah, also UPM. Correct me if I'm wrong, lah. But they have their own teaching hospital. Means, like, the... the Your... Means the medical faculty, the hospital is, like... There's an attached teaching hospital. And that is, like, a huge plus point so yeah if you ask me private or public completely fees is the biggest difference and uh your preference law what is your what is your situation like what do you want if you want to study overseas then obviously you don't study in public uni like you have to study in private uni so if you want to study overseas or you want like twinning program then go for imu monash uh and then um yeah, I'll say it again. I, I've said it and I'll say it again. There's no good or bad. It pre it just depends on what you're looking for. Yeah. Okay, so next, let's talk about the entry requirement from pre-university to medical school. 
the entry requirement for matriculation uh, would be around 3.5 to 3.8 uh, CGPA yeah, and above right, you have to get. But same uh, theory as SPM, because medical school is so competitive, you should not aim for the minimum requirement. Like that's just the entry requirement. But trust me, everyone like 4.0, 4.0, 4.01. Uh, yeah, so doesn't mean that you didn't get 4.0, you cannot get into medical school. Lah. It's just that if you get a 4 flat, it would be more secure lah, and it's safer. Yeah, it would be more safe for you to get a spot in medical school. So if you want to enter University uh, Malaya, UM, then make sure to take make sure to take BMAT. There's this BMAT admission test that you have to take like, in order to meet the entry requirement for just for UM. For UKM, UPM, uh, there's no such thing. Like. Okay, and then MUET and IELTS, so these uh, are also part of the entry requirement. And if you want to be safe, like, you know, I, ha I have received a lot of questions, so I'll just, like, give you information based on the questions that I got asked. They asked me, uh, can, what is, like, what, how, how, what Muet band should I get to be safe? If you ask me, I would say band 4. Lah. Band 4 is the safest. But I think band 3 is the minimum requirement. But yeah, band 4 is the safest. And band 5, even better. Yeah, okay. So, next up, let's talk about UPU application. Yeah, this is like the one that you all like, oh, don't know what to put, don't know what to put. Because, yeah, I know I, I've been in your shoes. No, not really. I already know what I want, but then like I be in your shoes, like um thinking about like how should I arrange my university. So what you should know is that the we have twelve choices, right? Yeah, you all know got twelve choices. So the top four, the first four choices are for interview courses, and then the fifth to number twelve would be non-interview courses. So I'll talk. I'll say. Uh, I'll give information based on like medical school wise, lah. Okay, so if you want to uh, study medicine, if you really want to study medicine, you should maximize your chances in getting it. Lor. So your top four choices, you should just put all the medical courses. Lah. You can put first UM, UKM, UPM, USM. Yeah, so this is the first point. Lah. If you want to study medicine, just maximize your chances by placing all four. But uh, I have friends who... Like, they don't know what they want to study and they actually put, put first choice medicine UM, second choice dentistry UM and she actually got both offer letters which is like, whoa, okay. So actually, um, they don't really ask you lah because like last time, right, when I was like, I was like very worried lah, the, the interviewers would ask me like, oh, see, if you really want to study medicine, then why, why you put other courses in your top four choices? But after, um, after going to all the interviews, like none of them ask questions like this. The most they will ask you is just like, why did you put us as third choice and not your first choice? Uh, <coughs> so I think, don't need to worry much lah. But yeah, just if you really want to study medicine, yes, maximize your chances by placing all four, okay? And yeah, the next, the next concern you would ask is like, okay, put all four university, then how should I arrange it? Arrange it, uh, top one, top two, top three, top four. You all have your Singmu Zong Da Xie, right? Like, I'm sure all of you, like, have, like, a university that you all want to apply to. Uh, and it could be UM, it could be UKM, it could be UPM, and it could be uh, other uni lah. So, of course, if you already have, then you should put that as the first choice, oh. But a lot of you ask me, after getting your BMAT results and your PSPM results, all of you ask me whether or not you all should put UM as first choice. Hi oh my god damn okay okay this is how I reply all of you lah uh if it's because of your if it's because of your BMAT results don't worry so much because I think from what I observe they don't really they look at your PSPM results your pointer and your interview first BMAT is like as long as you um get a book, get your get average results right it's good enough already it's like an admission test so PSPM and uh, interview is the most 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 important one ah. mm. so I I think if like you you are considering uh, whether or not to put UM you can ask yourself these two questions first is it the course that you want to aim or the university if to you, getting the medical course matters most, then 
maybe you can put UM away and put some another uni law. Then, uh, you you know your the possibility of you getting the course would be higher as well, uh. But if your priority is the university, or UM is your uh dream uni or UKM is your dream uni, anything. If you uh, if UM is your, your dream uni, um. If you don't put it, then you sort of like give it up already lah. Then maybe you will regret in the future because you didn't even try. Uh, that's the... I think you can like sort of think about it in that in that perspective and then make your decision whether you want to put UM as your first choice or not lah. But bottom line lah, BMAT is just an admission test. Doesn't really matter, okay? Um, and then... Okay, from last year, from last year, from what I know, I put my my arrangement is UM, UKM, UPM, USM. Yeah, and then after that, uh, the other I I only fill up six choices like the minimum, uh, kelengkapan because I know for sure that I want to study medicine law. Even if I get other courses, I wouldn't accept lah. So that's why I just put six up. Mm, of course, putting to all twelve choices is the best. Would be encouraged and is the best. Uh, yeah encourage you to put all 12 choices okay back to what I was saying um yeah so I put UM UKM UPM USM I got the offer letters for all the uni except for UPM because UPM was my third choice and then I asked around and I realized that everyone who put who placed UPM as their third choice did not get the offer letter so I think UPM only uh give offer letters to the first and second choice like interview offer letters so, <clears throat> every year, the statistics will be different. So, I cannot tell you for sure. Like, last time my senior said, if you put UKM as second choice, right, the possibility of, possibility of you getting it is very, very low because UKM, they they, they prioritise people who put them in first choice. Ah. But, you see this year, I don't know why many of us who put UKM as second choice got into UKM. So, uh, every year is changing Everything is changing every year So, you know, nothing is certain So I can't really give you advice on that part Okay, so Yeah mm. So, the issue here settled uh, It's just like, whether or not you want to put UM first Depends on you lah You can just think of it on the the two ways that I that I told you Yeah Okay, so um, Oh yeah, one more thing I think they also look at your SPM. So I, I think it, uh, it works. I don't know how true is this, but I, I'm just guessing. La. I think they look at your PSPM result, then interview. Then if let's say these two person equally good, equally good, then they will look at your BMAT. If still equally good, then they will look at your SPM. Yes, something like that. Yeah. And um, yeah, so just the really, really... Mm, UPU application, I know all of you feel very like, oh man, like, I know it's like a very, uh, your 人生中重要的决定, very important decision in your life, especially as a pre-university, pre-medical student. You just do what you can, just do what you can, uh, get that, get that good CGPA, do well in your interview and everything. Do what you can, the rest is luck. Yeah, leave the rest to God, okay? Yeah. That's all I can say for UPU application. Okay, so after applying for your UPU, then you will be waiting for your interview offer letter. Lo. So like like what I said just now, la, those who put UPM as third choice did not get the offer letter for last time. But who knows, this year, I'm not sure. And yeah, you have to check it through the UPU website. So that one also is a very, very nervous time la, because like you you like if you didn't get the offer letter means means you basically got rejected ma. so after getting an offer letter then it would be the last stage before you enter the university of um, medical school and the last stage la, before you just achieve your dreams of becoming a medical student which is the interview phase and the interview phase is like extremely important la. I can't emphasize more it's the most important part but when if I'm gonna talk about it, it's gonna take too long, and this video maybe two hours. <laughs> no lah, not 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 that or not not me But um, yeah, uh, I'll be making a interview video like uh how to prepare for your interview in medical school in the near future. For now, right, you all please just 
focus on your PSPM2, okay? Because after you finish your PSPM2, there is time for you to prepare for the interview one. So for now, focus on your exam, get that good CGPA, and then, yeah, then that one done already, then you come back to interview. And by that time, I would have a video up for you to help you in your preparation process. Okay, so for now, I'll just briefly, briefly tell you a little bit lah. Okay, so uh, last time, UM was an online video recording. So it's just a video recording and through that, they select their students. And then for U UKM, they go more in depth in, for their selection, uh, which they have two phases. The first phase would be also an online video recording about like, introduce yourself, um, why do you want to study medicine and why did you choose UKM? Yeah, and then after you go through the first phase, then you will be called to uh, a live interview, like a live uh, online meeting uh, in phase two. Like. So very luckily, I got um, called for the second time and then I done my live interview and all and yeah. And luckily, like, and then now I'm in UKM studying medicine like, as a first year medical student. So... Yeah, it's, uh, it's a long process, like getting into medical school is such a long process, but you know, once you get in, yeah, like, worth it lah, okay? So, uh, yeah, so basically that's it lah. So if you all want to look forward to that video, I'll film it, like really, uh, hopefully like, if I have the time lah. And yeah, you can subscribe if you want so that you don't miss it out. So when you're subscribed and then turn on the notification bell, right? Then you will get informed whenever I have a new video. Lo. Okay, so after finish, young, finish after finish on, after finishing your interview phase, then it will be waiting time. You will have to play the waiting game. It's gonna be like really sian one. You get rotten at home because uh, the after you finish your metrics, right, it has quite a long period of time like, before getting to university. So, trust me, like, like you can finish watching all your K-dramas, you can just, like, like chill the head out. Like, like really, you, you'll you be so, you're gonna be so free that you're rot, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, yeah, so, the day has come. UPU, UPU results day has come and then yeah it's time for you to check your results whether or not you get the university you want okay so yeah so okay so I'll just briefly tell you about the UPU rules la, like how it actually runs it's either you get it or you don't get it okay so if you get a university course like let's say you get uh, like you want to study in UKM per se but then you get USM something like that then you want to appeal that is not possible because you have already, UPU already give you a course and a university. Same goes to if you did not, unfortunately, touch wood lah, if you didn't get into medical school, then they will give you something else in your choices. For for example, computer science ah, or like biochemical science ah. Then all this right, if you get a course right, you cannot do any rayuan ah, you cannot appeal because you already got a course. You can only appeal, you can only write you when you didn't get anything, okay? So, um, yeah, so if that happens, I'm so sorry if that happens, and if that happens, then you can, you have to either study in private medical school, or, or you can apply. Ha, this one, did you know if you did not get into the UPU one, you can still apply to study in public universities? Do you know that? Many people don't know lah, but I don't know now, maybe like, uh, more and more people know about this. It is called the direct channel. So you can still apply. Yeah, so uh, the direct channel is available in UM. UM is called the Satu channel, and then you also have the direct channel in UKM lah. So basically, it means that you you can study in pri public universities, but you pay the full price off. So it's like studying in a private university like that. Yeah, so for UKM, the fees is 300k lah, direct channel, if you get accepted, you have to still go through the whole process, through the interview and all, and then you pass, they accept you, you get the offer letter, then you can study in the public university by paying the tuition fees lah. Yeah, but it's okay, I mean, I think you can still consider because 300k is still cheaper than... Uh, it's still cheaper than a uh, few private universities. Like, I know Monash, right, it's like 600k. So... It's a good, um, you can consider also la, yeah, in that case. And, okay, now it leads to the next question la. Last time I was like really, really curious about this. Because, um, 
uh, direct channel is sort of like a backup in just in case you didn't get UPU, but the direct channel application affect UPU application. Yeah, this is a uh, a lot of people like like uh they have this concern lah whether or not like if I apply both side then would they accept reject me in UPU and then they choose direct channel because direct channel I have to pay ma ah uh, you get what I mean lah. Uh, then uh, yeah, there's this concern going around, but I can tell you the answer is no because with all the concerns, my friend chose to call the management and ask them this very question: Will direct channel affect my UPU uh, application? And the person say no because they are two completely different channels, lah. So what happens in UPU happens in UPU. What happens in direct channel happens in direct channel. So yeah, don't worry. It won't get affected so just apply okay just apply yeah yeah so yeah i think i think that's all i think i have finished my my what what is it called uh info giving session to help you guys you pre-medical students mm, so i hope you guys find it helpful and i really have to go oh my god it's already at night i still have to pack my bags and then go to my uni again. Yeah, so if you watch until now, wow, dedication, okay? And yeah, if you find it helpful, do share it with your friends lah. I'm sure all this information would help a lot of people. And yeah, do consider to like and subscribe to my channel as well. It really helps a lot. If you like, right, the algorithm will like sort of like do their magic lah. And also comment if you want. You can ask me any questions. I will try my best to answer. You can DM me in IG lah. And my username is Kiwi Chiwei. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you can also ask me in the comment section. If I can, I will answer. Okay. And yeah. And also subscribe so you don't miss out on my future uploads. Till then. Bye bye. And good luck.